Each of the search tools that we've discussed were designed to complement an individual internet resource whose paths never really cross. As the internet has grown, the developers of these internet tools have tried to blend them together, but they've only enjoyed limited success. You can, with today's modern graphic-based Gopher clients, perform some FTP functions from within Gopher using Veronica's search all of Gopher space to locate images for retrieval. But Veronica is an Archie and often can't find the vast majority of the FTP resources that only Archie can. The greatest shortcoming to Archie and Veronica was overcome with WACE, the ability to search the contents of the documents themselves. WACE was actually the forerunner to a web search in that its search encompassed the entire contents of a server, not just its directories. So, it was a natural internet evolution that the web search tools incorporate the best of its predecessors. If you've ever surfed the World Wide Web, you know of its incredible abilities. If not, you'll have to watch our next tape to get the in-depth story. Suffice it to say, though, the World Wide Web has the ability to incorporate graphics, sounds, and even video within its text, and includes all of the internet tools, FTP, Gopher, email, and WACE. Navigating the web is as simple as pointing and clicking with your mouse, thanks to hyperlinking, and the web's fantastic resources grow each day. And just like its forerunners, that growth has created the need for search tools, known as web search engines, and there are quite a few. Now, I'm running software called Netscape, which is known as a web browser. It's a powerful but easy to use program that I recommend for navigating the net. There are a number of ways to locate the various search engines on the web, but we've made it easy by combining them all on our Classroom Connect website. The address for that is http colon slash slash www.wentworth.com slash classroom slash search dot htm. Now, if you've never used the web before, this address will look different from what you're accustomed to. But then again, the web is like no other internet resource. So, here we are. Let's start with this first search engine called Webcrawler, which is managed by the University of Washington. Now, you'll notice that certain words on my screen are blue. There are the hyperlinks I spoke of, and clicking on one will take you to the place described in the text. Pretty cool, huh? Now here's the search engine's equivalent of the dialog box found in Veronica or Waze. Notice that the checkbox for AND is checked. That way, the search will assume that all of the words in your query have the AND operator between them. Unchecked, it allows you to use other operators, just like the Boolean searches of Veronica. Also, there's a pop-down window that lets you select the maximum number of responses to your query. You'll find it defaulted to 25, and that's where we'll leave it for now. So let's try a search, say, the periodic table of elements. Again, this search, like the others, is not case sensitive. So click on search, and away we go. The first thing you'll notice is that the web is a lot faster than any of the other internet search tools we've used. Now, up here, Webcrawler says that it found 292 documents, but since we selected just 25, that's what it's returned. If you wanted to see the rest, you could go back up here and click on the back button, which steps you back one page, redefine your return limit, say to 100, and then rerun your search. Let's take a look at what we have with these. Notice that, just like WACE, this search engine scores the returns on a scale of 1,000. Let's try this one. Just click on the blue text and, wow, pretty cool graphics. We've been sent to the web server at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in California. And take a look at this, a great graphic of the periodic table. Now look down here. Here's a keyword search of the periodic table. It's actually a hyperlink to a waste server, specifically for the table of elements. That's part of the magic of the web. It can incorporate other internet tools. Now, check this out. 
let's step back to the menu of search results and come down here to the reference shelf. Click on it and then click on periodic table of the elements. And check this out. It's a gopher server of the periodic table. See, if I click on argon, it actually loads that gopher document. Hey, but wait, there's more. Back up to the response page. Go down just a little bit farther. Hey, here's a GIF file menu. Remember, we downloaded one using Archie. So click on it, and then on the word here. This is an FTP site full of GIF files. Just click on one, say element.gif, and it loads right onto your screen for review. If you want to save it, just come up to the file pull down menu and then click on save. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? All of the internet tools are available to you right on the web. So let's try a different search engine. I'll go back to the Classroom Connect search page and let's try InfoSeq. Now, this looks pretty much the same in that you have a dialog box in which to enter your keywords. So, I'll enter our search. Periodic table of elements. And then I'll click on Run Query. And here we are. It looks like InfoSeek has returned some different responses from WebCrawler. And check it out. InfoSeek includes descriptions of the websites that it's found. So let's try this one called Periodic Table of the Elements. It has kind of an odd looking description. Just click on the blue words and, ha, huh, I see. This web page has numbered the elements. That explains that kind of strange description. Now, if I just click on one of the elements, here's the information. As you can see, there's a huge base of chemistry resources on the web, and each website presents them a little differently. So let me go back to the return responses. These descriptions sure make it easy to know what you'll get. Hey, take a look at this, the reference shelf. We saw this one in our web crawler search as well. But let's back up here at the top and look at this strange return. Huh, it's called Yahoo. Believe it or not, Yahoo is another search engine and InfoSeq has linked to it as a resource for even more chemistry resources. And they're listed here in the description. But Yahoo operates a little differently from InfoSeq. Here, I'll show you. Go back to our home search page and we'll find Yahoo. Notice that it doesn't have a query box. And here's why. Yahoo searches are broken down by category. See, let's try science. Now it's even broken down even farther into some very specific sciences. And take a look at that. The number of references in its database for each category is listed here at the end. So let's stay with chemistry, which has 203 links. And here we are. This is just like a gopher search in that we're following menus. So let's see. Down here near the bottom, here it is, the periodic table of elements. And take a look at that. It's the list we just saw in InfoSeq. That's because InfoSeq, in reality, referenced Yahoo's searchable database as part of its own search. Now, there are a couple more search engines on the web to take a look at. Let's go back to the home search page again. And cursor down here below Yahoo to EINet Galaxy. Now, Galaxy is kind of like Yahoo in that the references are categorized by topic. But in this case, the topics are described from the main page so that you don't have to follow the menus to see where you're going. See? And down here, here's science. Let's see how this works. Click on chemistry. And hey, this is great. Look at all this stuff. More topics, new sites. And look at all these collections of information, directories, schools. This really is a killer database. And remember that anything you see here is just a click away. Let's see what else is on the Classroom Connect search page. We'll click on Home. And down here below Galaxy and Yahoo is one called Lycos. We'll click on that. And hey, not too bad. 
Lycos contains almost 4 million keyword links. Let's try this one out. We'll click on the Lycos search form, and this looks a little bit more conventional, a dialog box. In it, I'll enter our keywords, periodic table of elements. And then we click on start search. <laughs> this is different. It's actually search for references to each word and its variations. And look at the number of hits to some of these. Up here, 2,500 or so to the word periodic, and down here, just one match to the word periodically. But down here, the actual response is to the search string itself, scored just like Waze, and listed by internet address and date. And each response includes a little bit about what's on that site. Let's head back to the home search page one more time. Down here near the bottom, just below Lycos, is another search engine called Global Network Navigator, or GNN. Now, GNN works pretty much like EINet Galaxy in that the topics are categorized and you follow menus rather than entering search queries. And down here below other powerful net searching tools are our old but time-tested friends, Veronica, Archie, and Wace. And even though we're accessing them via the web, they work just like we saw before. So if you're on the web, this page is really all you'll ever need to find every available resource on the internet. And while searching the internet can be a challenge, it can also be fun and rewarding. And now that you know how, happy hunting. Thank mm -hmm. you.